Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From the Lake Hope Lodge here in Ohio, this is your host, Adam Graham. Now, I know that the last uh, episode featuring Lake Hope was actually several days ago, but just the nature of recording schedules and time, I knew I would not have time to record this episode when I got back. This is actually the first one I recorded, but I'll save any explanation since I actually explained that uh, when I uh, did Richard Diamond. So for our 2250th episode special, we're returning to an episode of Suspense. The original air date is September the 20th of 1945, and this one is called The Library Book. Now, the Roma Wine Company of Fresno, California presents... Suspense. Tonight, Roma Wines bring you Miss Myrna Loy, a star of Library Book, a suspense play produced, edited, and directed for Roma Wines by William Spear. Suspense, radio's outstanding theater of thrills, is presented for your enjoyment by Roma Wines. That's R-O-M-A, Roma Wines. Those excellent California wines that can add so much pleasantness to the way you live, to your happiness in entertaining guests, to your enjoyment of everyday meals. Yes, right now a glassful would be very pleasant, as Roma Wines bring you Miss Myrna Loy in Library Book, a remarkable tale of suspense. I'll get it, Maggie. Public Public Library, Hillcrest Branch, Miss Roberts speaking. I bet... No, I'm sorry, we do not carry the racing form. We do not carry even the current racing form, much less those published in 1925. I know nothing whatever of Man of War's activities. Well, you'll have to consult another source to win your wager. Goodbye. Yes? Uh, Miss, do I give my book back here? Yes, this is the return desk. Let me see. That's two days overdue. You owe four cents, Mrs. Rudnick. It's a lot of reading. My daughter read it to me nights. Here's the four cents, miss. Thank you. Oh, it was a grand book, though. Really grand. Gone with the wind, I suppose. I personally very seldom read bestsellers. It surely is romantic. Hmm. Uh, I wonder, miss, uh, do you know what happens on page 931? Page 931? Yes. We don't know to this day whether Scarlet, she goes to uh, Mellon's party uh, for Ashley, or page 921 and 932 are missing. So we were wondering if... uh... Missing? Good heavens, let me see. Uh, We'd just give anything to know if Scarlet went to the party. One moment, Mrs. Rudnick. The pages are missing. One leaf has been torn or cut from this book. This is vandalism. It's what? A page has been deliberately ripped out. I'll have to ask you for your reader's card. But we didn't do it. One moment, please. Miss Hughes. Yeah? Miss Hughes, uh, will you please look up the list price of this book, Gone with the Wind? Yeah, sure. Just a second. You see, Mrs. Rudnick, you will have to pay the cost of the book or lose all library privileges until you do. Oh, but please, Miss V, didn't do it. It's, um, it's a dollar forty-nine, Prudence. I don't pay no dollar forty-nine, because I didn't do it. How'd you find out about the damage, Prudence? Mrs. Rudnick called my attention to it, fortunately. Oh. Well, if she tore out the page, she wouldn't have told you. No. You see, Miss? But the rules... Oh, relax. Relax, Prudence. Well... Very well, Mrs. Rudnick. I'll investigate further. In the meantime, you may continue to use your card. Oh, thank you, miss. Thank you so much, and goodbye. Goodbye. Maggie, why must you interfere like that? You know the rules perfectly well. Yeah, sure, but they don't make sense. That's not for us to say. She should have reported before she took the book out. Oh, now, that's silly. How could she report the page was torn out before she read the book? Well, maybe you're right. I don't know why you raise such a dust about it, anyhow. Because if I don't find out who did tear the book, I'll have to pay. And I don't want to spend a dollar and forty-nine cents on a bestseller. Hey. <clears throat> Take care of that boy, Maggie. Oh, okay. What'll it be? These here. You want to take these out? 
All of them? Sure. Here's my card. Oh. Mm. Tarzan of the Apes. Tarzan Triumphant. Tarzan and the Leopard Men. Tarzan and the Forbidden City. Tarzan the Invincible. Tarzan... Morning Becomes Electra. Yeah, I'm making a radio. A walkie-talkie. Oh, look, I haven't read this myself, but uh, I don't think it's going to help you. No? It says Electra. Yeah, well, anyway, you, you, you got one too many books. Okay, I'll take the electric book out when I bring these back. I'll bring them back tomorrow, so save it. Five books, and he'll bring them back tomorrow. Did you get that, Prudence? Five books, and the kids... Prudence, what are you doing? It's very strange. It's really very strange. Are you still mooning over that missing page? In Gone with the Wind? Yes. You know, whoever ripped that page out also underlined words on the following page, page 933. Yeah? What kind of words? Oh, they don't seem to mean anything. Words like anyone, merrily, hardly. They've been underlined by little scratches in the paper. Oh. Well, maybe somebody was cutting out cookies on top of the book. Come on, huh? It's past closing time. I've got to find out what's on page 931. Well, I can buy a copy of this book on my way home, and I will. Buy it? I thought you wouldn't spend dough on a bestseller. Well, I I shouldn't. But this annoys me. It's vandalism. And besides, I have an odd feeling, a feeling that something's wrong. Yes, I have a definite premonition. Will you put that book away and come to bed? All right, Maggie. I guess you win. Oh. Was cookies? No, it was words. I fastened the two pages together and made the marks back through. But these words don't mean anything either. Cure, wait, poor. I think they were cut out of the book because the marks are above and below each word. Sure, that's kid stuff. You know, cut out words and paste them to write a letter. Cut them out? (laughs) Well, of course. Let's see. There's poor, your, 50, instructions, her, Melanie, Melanie. Oh, Melanie. That was uh, Olivia de Havilland in the picture. Really? I wouldn't know. Now, um, I'll start with the word 50. It's an adjective and must modify something. Oh, natch, natch. 50 health. No. 50 instructions. Could be, but it's awkward. 50 grand... Well, it's slang, but it does mean something. I'll tell the world 50 grand means something. Now, a noun must be followed by a verb. 50 grand to wait or to cure. I'll try that. 50 grand to cure. That's a plenty expensive cure, that. Now, her. 50 grand to cure her. Her. Melanie. A girl's name. Melanie. Why, yes. All the other words pair off perfectly now. Your Melanie, poor health, weight, instructions. Fifty grand to cure her. That's it, Maggie. The words couldn't possibly go in any other order. Yeah. So, now you've solved the puzzle, let's get to bed. Well, all right. I suppose I have to wait until the morning to call the police. The police? Just because a book was torn? No, because it's a ransom note. Oh, prudence. But can't you see? That's what it says. Some poor girl named Melanie has been kidnapped and is being held for ransom for 50 grand. It's our duty as citizens to help her. For suspense, Roma Wines are bringing you as star Miss Myrna Loy in Library Book by Cornell Woolrich. Roma Wines' presentation tonight in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Between the acts of Suspense, this is Truman Bradley for Roma Wines. Elsa Maxwell, the noted hostess, says... Every woman knows men love good home cooking, simple dishes cooked well, like beef with pan-browned potatoes, a rich stew piping hot, a spaghetti with a lively sauce. And here's a secret to really make simple food more tempting, more enjoyable. Serve cool Roma California Burgundy. So delightful, so delicious, so distinguished. 
Enjoy Roma Burgundy with your dinner tomorrow night. It adds so much to the pleasure of dining. Roma wines are always unvaryingly good, full of fragrance and finer tasting. The result of carefully selected grapes gathered at peak of flavor fullness from California's choicest vineyards. Quickly but gently pressed, then unhurriedly guided to perfection by Roma's ancient winemaking skill and bottled at Roma's famed wineries. Remember, because of uniformly fine quality at reasonable cost, more Americans enjoy Roma than any other wine. Always ask for Roma, R-O-M-A, Roma Wines. And now Roma Wines bring back to our Hollywood soundstage Myrna Loy as Prudence Roberts in Library Book, a play well calculated to keep you in suspense. Miss Roberts, I'm sorry I couldn't get here till this late. I'm Lieutenant Murphy from headquarters. Oh, you're a detective? Well, that's what my paycheck says, ma'am. Oh, well, of course, you're not in uniform. But uh, come over here behind my desk. I want to show you something. Yes, ma'am. Has anyone been kidnapped lately? Huh? What? Anyone named Melanie? Do you know? Why? Well, this book came back to the library damaged, and I deciphered a kidnap message from the damaged page. See? Read it. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> you, uh, you deciphered this, uh, this note? <clears throat> you're laughing at me. I want to do my duty, and you laugh. Oh, no, ma'am, no, ma'am. We'll check on... Well, say, what do you know? Yes? What is it? Oh, nothing, nothing, miss. Uh, you took your glasses off, that's all. <clears throat> uh, what'd you say your name was again, miss? My name is Miss Prudence Roberts. What has that got to do with this? Well, we have to know the source of our information. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this does look like a ransom note now that I look at it. Of course it does. But uh, we haven't any case on deck right now that this could possibly fit into. I never heard of a ransom note without a kidnap case. Oh, you haven't. Very well. I'm sorry I bothered you. We have to close the library now, so good evening. Uh, just a minute, miss. What are you going to do? I'm going to find out who damaged this book. Do you see this card? These are all the people who have taken the book out. Six altogether. Mm -hmm. Lucille Baumgarten, August Beasley, Walter Evans, Well, Jeanette that's fine, Craig. miss. Uh, look, uh, maybe I could drop around and see how you're making out. Uh, tomorrow? No, I wouldn't in inconvenience you. You needn't bother. Gee, miss, you, you talk such good English. I try to. Well... Look, could I see you home? It's pretty late, you know. I feel quite safe, thank you. The worst that ever happened to me was one night when a vulgar masher spoke to me. He said, hi, toots. Imagine. Oh. Did you have your glasses on? Why, come to think of it, that was the time I'd left them to be repaired. How very peculiar. Yeah, yeah. Say, miss, uh, how would you like to see a picture tonight with me, huh? I wouldn't think of going out with someone I'd met only once, Lieutenant. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I guess you wouldn't. And besides, because the police of this city are obviously so inefficient, I have a great deal of work to do. Yes, Lieutenant Murphy, I'm going to be very busy tonight. <laughs> Miss Baumgarten, I only wanted to make sure... You're sure the page was missing when you read it? Oh, it was missing, all right. I remember because it took me quite a while to figure out what happened. But I finally did, so it didn't worry me. Say, I'm not going to be in any trouble over this, am I? No. It was damaged by someone before you. But, miss, I didn't even read the book. I saw the name on it, see? Gone with the wind. So I thought it was about airplanes. I'm building a glider, but when I started to read it, crime and Antley. I think they ought to name books so you know what you're getting. It'd save a lot of trouble. My dear young lady, a man of my age and education is aware of the value of books and cares for them properly, even novels. Yes, yes, I, I remember that page was missing. Obviously ripped out an act of wanton destruction. Hmm, shocking, shocking. Yes, what do you want? Does Miss Jeanette Craig live here? What's that? Does Miss Jeanette Craig live here? She did. She moved. Ah. 
When did she move? Oh, about two weeks ago, Monday, I think. Yes, on the 17th. But she returned this book on the 18th. That book? Oh, no, I was the one that returned that for her. I was cleaning out her room and I found it. Well, I work in the public library, and this book was damaged. I wanted to speak to Miss Craig about it. Oh, well, all I know is that uh, she didn't expect to go when she did. Her room still paid for her, and she left most of her things. Ah. Someone took sick and sent for her, they said. They called for her late one night, and off she went in a rush with two men. But if she left her belongings, she'll be coming back for them. Oh, I guess she will, or she'll send for them. Uh, 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 when did you say her room would be available? Her room? Yes, I'm thinking of moving, and I like this neighborhood, and I thought... Oh, well, come right in, and I'll show it to you. Now, it's real nice, first floor. Careful, it's dark in these halls. I'm used to it, and I can roam around with my eyes shut and still... Still (laughs) find my way. Mm. Uh, Now, uh, this was her room. Come in. It's real nice in the daytime. Is the uh, closet good and deep? Well, go ahead and look. That's her things in there, and some real nice things, too. I don't see how they do it being a nightclub dancer. Yes, lovely things. Huh. Funny. This monogram is M.S., and on this bag, too. Those aren't her initials. Oh, you know how it is. These girls lend each other their clothes. Probably belongs to a friend of hers. Uh, did you ever hear her mention Melanie? Hmm? Oh, no, we don't allow any eating in the rooms. Well, I'll take it, but I have a roommate. That's all right with me. Fine. I'll get her and we'll move in tonight. Tonight? Well, all right. I'll move Miss Craig's things into my room then. Oh, no, no, no. Leave them right here. I I mean, uh, you don't have to bother. We'll have plenty of space. The closet is so long. Oh, just as you say. And anyway, I want to know when someone comes for her things because I do want to find out where Miss Craig is. You see, I'm terribly anxious about uh, uh, the book. I really am. Prudence, you and your mystery. We move out of a perfectly good apartment into a room next door to a pool hall. But I have to find out where Jeanette Craig is. Uh, Even when the lights are out, we have that darn neon sign. Chop suey. Chop suey. But don't you think it's strange, Maggie? All her things initialed M.S. instead of J.C. M. could stand for... Uh, Hey. Hey, listen. What's that? Shh. Someone's unlocking the door. Holy smoke. Someone's come for her clothes. I know it. Um, yes? Uh, what do you want? Why, I... I, 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 Well, I didn't expect to say... We... We rented this room today. Uh, wait. I'll turn on the light. Now, what do you want? Well, you see, I was sent to get something... uh, uh, How'd you get a key? Huh? I know. You've come for Miss Craig's things. Is that it? Yeah. Yeah, miss. That's right. It's a good thing you rented a room because I come to pay up and settle everything. This way it's going to be a lot easier. (laughs) This way you can just take the things. They're right here in the closet. I'll help you. Yes? Well, thanks. Here. Huh? (laughs) What did you... It's quite a load, isn't it? Well, quite good. Yeah. Well, thanks. Thanks, miss. You'll have to make two trips. Well, I think so. There's so many things. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll be right back as soon as I get these in the car. Quick, Maggie. I have to dress. Help me. Well, why didn't you ask him where the, where this I girl... I can't ask him. Now, look, Maggie. I'm going to slip out now. While he's in here, I'm going downstairs. Why but are what? you messing in this? And I want you to cover up for me and delay him as long as possible. Oh, jeepers. What are you going to do? Come here. Look out the window. See his car down there, the long black one? Yeah, yeah, I see it. Well... I'm going to get in that taxi and follow him. Driver, he's awfully far ahead. Lady, I know this game backwards. It's been 20 miles and I haven't lost him yet. Keep close watch. He may turn off in an effort to evade us. I'll see him. Hey, what's the matter? You move out on your hunt? Well, I don't blame you for being sore. But, lady, there's all kinds of angles. I beg your pardon. For instance, I notice you wear glasses. Now, there's a saying. Men never make passes at girls who wear... Please, will you confine yourself to your driving? Okay. Okay. 
Okay. Hey, look, he turned. Oh, hurry. Why? We're way out in the country. Oh, oh, you said it. He's turning off again, up ahead. Probably a driveway. Pull up at the entrance. Okay. Well, this must be it. There's a house, and there's the car. Oh, what a lonely-looking place. Yeah. Now what? Well, uh, you wait here, driver. Uh, 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 one minute, lady. The time has come to tell you I got you clocked at seven bucks and 85 cents. That much? And I, I forgot my pocketbook. I, I thought so, the old game. But I have money at home. Outside. You heard me? Outside. That's right. Now, if you was a man, I'd take it out of your jaw. As it is. Oh, please. You aren't going to leave me. Yeah. You're going to walk. But you can't leave me here. Lady, I can't. Anyway, they might have a phone in the house. Uh, I don't even know where I am. I'll tell you where you are, baby. You're on your own. Oh, to think anyone could be so... I'll report you. Melanie Stevenson. They won't let me go. I think they're going to kill me. Melanie? Ah. But where is Miss Craig? I'm Miss Craig. Oh, please, I'll tell you later, but get me out of here. Well, uh, can you climb through and drop from the sill? No, no, I'm chained to the bed. Oh, please, hurry, bring someone back with you. That's the only way I can get out of here. All right, all right. I'll run back and phone Lieutenant Murphy, and the police will... Oh, no, they won't. Come in, Toots, and stay a while. But I, uh, you see, I... Oh, hello. So we meet again. So you had a nice long ride following me, huh? Get in. Oh, but you can't... No, 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 don't be bashful. You ain't going nowhere else from here. Not even to phone your friend, Lieutenant Murphy. You've reached the end of the road, babe. Positively the end of the road. Murphy, close the door and sit down. This is important. Okay, Captain. Wow, well, what's up? It's a kidnapping case, Murphy. I only hope we're not too late. That man who just left my office was Martin Stevenson. Yeah, who's been kidnapped? His daughter. This is the story. She ran away from home a few months ago to work in a nightclub. Took another name. Didn't even let her family know where she was living. That's why they didn't know when she disappeared, so it wasn't reported until now. How'd she disappear? Well, her father doesn't know. But it looks like someone recognized her in the club, knew the Stevensons had dough, and grabbed her. Well, first thing the old man knows, he gets a ransom note. You know, the usual kind, words cut out of something and pasted on paper to look like a telegram. Words pasted on... Captain, what was the daughter's name? Um, Melanie, I think. Melanie. Chief, you you know, you should have had her to read more, like me. Huh? It's Melanie. Like, uh, yeah, like in Gone with the Wind. She's the same note. The same note. Now, what are you raving the about? The note that librarian, Miss Roberts, called us about. Remember I told you? Remember what a laugh it handed us? Yeah, say, that's right. Well, she must be a pretty smart girl. Hey, maybe we ought to talk to her. Yeah, yeah, just a minute. I got her phone number. I'll, I'll call her up. Oh, so you got her phone number. Huh? <laughs> I thought you said she wears glasses. Well, I, I got it, Cap, uh, just in case I turned up any information. Yeah. That's funny, she don't answer. Well, she might know one or two people besides you, Murph. Yeah, but she's got a roommate. Oh, well, I guess I can see her in the morning. That's soon enough. Oh, Prudence, they're going to kill us. I know it. They're sure you already went to the police. They're desperate. Maybe tonight they'll do it. I guess they could kill us and still collect the ransom. But I don't think... No, they won't dare. What are you doing? Still trying to get this chain off my wrist. If I could open the padlock... Oh, darn if you'd thing. only moved away from the window sooner, he... Hey. What's that? Someone on the stairs. 
They're carrying something up. Listen. Have you got enough, Duke? You want to pour a lot on the stairs? A lot of what? Plenty. I got plenty. What's that smell, Prudence? It's like gasoline. Oh, no. Oh, they couldn't do that. Come on, Duke. Get in the car. I got to start. Oh, they're going to burn us alive. Shh. I want to hear. Be right with you as soon as I give them a clip in the head. Ah, why worry? The smoke will get them. Come on. No, I'm soft-hearted. Won't take a minute. Oh, Prudence, Prudence. Shh. Get under the bed, quick. That's right. Way back. Now, don't make a sound. Okay, Duke. Step on it. All right, ladies. Where are you? Oh, I don't need a light to find you. You're so attached to that bed. <laughs> come on, come on, come on. Where are you? So you're being cute. Well, that ain't going to help any because I don't. I do. So you oh, trip me up, you little bit. My, I do. Bully, you unutterable bully. This is a good, strong shoe, and I'm going to... Trying to hit two helpless girls. I'm going to... Oh, no. Prudence, the fire, look. Oh, oh, I'm getting out of here. Just have it your way, babe. Just have it your way. Melanie, Prudence. Melanie, will you stop that awful noise? Oh, I don't want to die like this. I don't want to die like this. Well, neither do I, but I have my dignity. Help! Help! Hush. Please, hush. I want to see what they do. What difference does it make? They're leaving. Yes, they're in the car, but a car's pulling up in front. Melanie, two cars. They've come. They've found us. The police. Lieutenant Murphy and two Carlos. Oh! Oh, That's it, Lieutenant. That's the way. Jump! Jump! They've caught both of them, Eddie and Duke. It's wonderful. Lieutenant Murphy and Maggie's with him. That's how he knew. Come on, jump, Miss Roberts! We can't jump, Lieutenant. We're chained to the bed. He's coming up. Oh, but can he get through? The stairs are full of smoke. Can he get through, Lieutenant Murphy? Listen, fire won't stop him. We're in here. Over here in the corner. Where's the padlock? Right here, between us. Okay, now look, I'm going to smash you with this flashlight, I hope. Turn your faces. There, that does it. It's open. Are you Melanie Stevenson? Yeah. Yeah, now look, you're going to have to jump. They'll break your fall. They got a net there. Oh, I can't, I'm afraid. Your father's down there. Father? Yeah, yeah, now come on, ask the girl. Up on the ledge. I'm afraid. That's right. Now don't let the fire confuse you. Right. Just push off. That's it. Okay. Did it? Did, did they catch it? Yeah, sure. Now next. Uh, all right. You're not afraid, are you, Miss Roberts? Afraid? No. Really, Lieutenant Murphy? Why would I? Why could, could I? Uh, uh, Miss Roberts. Prudence. Well, what do you know? After all this, she thinks. <laughs> It's awfully nice of you to drive me home, Lieutenant. Oh, forget it, forget it. I'm just thankful I had enough sense to try and find you tonight. How did you find me? Well, first I went to your apartment, and from there I found where you moved to. And Maggie knew which cab you took tonight, and, well, after that it was pie. It was so melodramatic the way you got there just in time. Yeah? <laughs> oh, you know... I can't get over the way you talk, Miss Roberts. Every word so clear, just like a poem. Poem. Yeah, that's what I said. Poem. Oh, I certainly hope I'm going to see you some now that the excitement's over. Well, um... Look, look, there's a real highbrow picture showing right near your place. I'm sure I could take you to... No, I'm sorry. Well, I, I just thought I'd ask. But if you know of a good, fast murder picture with a lot of shooting... Miss Roberts. Can that, Miss Roberts. Prudence. Hey, hey, wait, what are you doing? I'm throwing my glasses out of the window. From now on, call me Toots. Roma Wines have brought you Menaloy. As star of Library Book, tonight's study in Suspense. This is Truman Bradley for Roma Wines, the sponsor of Suspense. 
With family and friends dropping in more and more, with more frequent entertaining at home, here's a tip from famed hostess Elsa Maxwell. She says, I always welcome friends and guests with Roma California Sherry served cool. There is nothing so friendly, so heartwarming as delicious, glorious, golden amber Roma Sherry. Rich in natural fragrance and nutty, mellow taste. The perfect first call for dinner. Most enjoyable later in the evening, too. Easier to serve than tea or coffee. Yes, friends, because of Roma's goodness, smart hostesses and thrifty housewives from Malibu to Main Street prefer Roma to any other wine. Enjoy Roma regularly. For better cocktails, use full-flavored Roma Vermouth, made and bottled in California, yet surprisingly low-priced. Try Roma Vermouth soon, won't you? Miss Myrna Loy will soon be seen in the Jack Skirball Bruce Manning production, A Genius in the Family. Next Thursday, you will hear Clifton Webb, a star of Suspense, radio's outstanding theater of thrills. Presented by Roma Wines, R-O-M-A, made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. This is Andrea J. Graham, author of the Web Surface series. Oh. And a man's wife. You're listening to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. Welcome back. A very interesting role for Myrna Loy. Playing a somewhat uh, stereotypical librarian. Actually, just really especially strict. I've met a lot of librarians, never quite met one like her. I doubt they ever existed like that. In her first uh, scene with that person who returned the library book and paid the four cent fine she was practically the judge dread of librarians enforcing the law but made up for it with other characteristics certainly this had to be a fun role to play for Myrna Loy because actors like to act and this was definitely not a typical Myrna Loy role certainly not the uh, type of role that we've come to associate her with particularly with her role as Nora Charles in the Thin Man movies it was kind of nice to see her loosen up uh, at the end even though I think they may have gone a little overboard on that but it's mostly played for comedy anyway all right well that will do it for today Join us back here tomorrow for Nightbeat. In the meantime, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook.